Well, hey everyone, it's Andrew Bro, and in this video, I am going to be walking through just a handful of settings, uh, mostly for people who are just starting out with Zoom. If you've never used it before, you're getting ready to, we're just going to cover the very, very basics. Now, I'm going to automatically assume that you've already set up your account with Zoom, and you're just getting ready to use it for the first time. So you've already gone out. You've, uh, you've set up a, an ID and you've gotten logged in for the first time and now you're just using the app. Here we're, we're on my Mac and we're just using the zoom.us app. Uh, so there's a few things that you would want to do right out of the gate. So the first thing is, is right here next to new meetings, and this works on a Mac or a PC, it doesn't, doesn't really matter, the, the interface looks almost identical on both. Uh, but you can click this little arrow to go down, and you have a couple of different settings um, that you can change here. Now, the first one is to start your meeting with the video. You can choose to not start with video, so it just starts a meeting uh, and your video is not turned on. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll go ahead and leave mine on. Uh, you can also decide whether or not to use your personal meeting ID. Now, if you're just getting started in Zoom and you're not sure what this is, every single account with Zoom has a personal meeting ID attached to it. It's almost like your phone number. Now, if you don't want to do a meeting where you're using your personal meeting ID, uh, and maybe it's just a random meeting that you're doing one time, you can leave this unchecked, and Zoom will automatically generate a meeting ID for you, and once that meeting is over and done, that ID will not be able to be used again. Your personal meeting ID, like your phone number, can be used again and again and again for multiple different meetings at various times, even within the same day, uh, and the ID for the meeting is not going to change. So if somebody gets bumped off, or maybe you're teaching a second session throughout the day, um, people can jump in and they're going to already have the meeting ID. So that's where you would want to use that. So we'll go ahead and say I'm going to use my personal meeting ID. And if I go down into personal meeting ID settings or PMI settings, we can click on this and we can kind of see how our personal meeting ID is set up. Now, right now I'm on a free account, so I cannot change my personal meeting ID. However, if you are on a pro plan, with uh, Zoom, you can actually modify the meeting ID and make it something unique. Um, hopefully like your phone number, if that's not already taken, you could actually punch in a 10 digit phone number right there and that would become your Zoom meeting ID. You can also decide to require a password. Uh, this is something you can come in and set. So for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just use one, two, three, four, five. You do not have to necessarily use a password when you're using your personal meeting ID. Uh, if you are doing multiple different types of meetings with different groups of people, it's always good to use a personal meeting uh, or a password um, because otherwise somebody from a previous meeting who already has your meeting ID could just jump in and join in a meeting that they're not supposed to be in. So that's why you would want to choose a password. Um, for me, I usually keep this turned off and I almost never use my personal meeting ID unless it's a meeting that's going to be recurring over and over with the same group of people. Uh, and the reason that I do that is because I could use my personal meeting ID, but then also set up a password for, you know, multiple different meetings if I wanted to, but then everyone would always have to know what the new password is. Whereas if I leave off the password and I'm not using my personal meeting ID and I'm just using a random meeting code, every time you do that it generates a new link and so the end user can just click that link and immediately they're in the meeting. They don't have to know any passwords or anything like that. So it really depends on what it is you're doing and how you're doing it, whether or not you would want to use a password or not. <laughs> All right, so here we can make changes to whenever we're using our personal meeting ID and setting up a, a new um, Zoom session, do we want to automatically have host video on, so that's your video, and do we want the participants to automatically have their video turned on? Uh, also, we can decide if we want to allow people to call in only by telephone for audio, computer only for audio, 
or if they're allowed to use the telephone or the computer, depending on whatever it is that they want to do. And then down here under the advanced options, we have a couple of other things. We can allow people to join the meeting before the host. Um, I usually always leave this turned on. Uh, that way, if somebody shows up to the meeting like five minutes early and decides to log in with the meeting ID, they can go ahead and do that. And uh, it really won't it really won't make any difference whether or not the host is there. They'll still be able to get in. If you keep that turned off, and let's say you're one or two minutes late getting to your uh, starting the meeting, uh, what will happen is is um, people may not actually show back up because they're going to try to join the meeting a little bit early. They're not going to be able to. They're going to become frustrated and leave, and they're probably not going to end up being in your meeting or webinar. Also, I like to turn this one on. By default, it's turned off. I like to turn it on, but it mutes all of the participants upon entry. Now, if you're doing a one-to-one -one meeting, you can definitely leave this turned off. That way, the person on the other end automatically has their microphone unmuted right from the get-go. But if you're going to have 25 or 30 participants all entering the meeting, uh, you know, within a five minute period of time. You really don't want all of their microphones to be unmuted, otherwise you start hearing lots of overlapping audio from a bunch of different sources. So I typically leave this muted, and then once everybody is in the meeting, if I decide to unmute a particular participant so they can speak, I can decide to do that as the host. hope that makes sense. Um, and of course, you can decide to automatically record the meeting right from the time you start it. I don't usually do that. I just, I just don't typically record my meetings, but if you are recording your meeting and you don't want to have to forget to hit record, you can have this turned on. So we'll go ahead and save these settings. And now we'll go ahead and uh, launch a new meeting. All right, we're going to go ahead and say join with computer audio but then I'm gonna go ahead and mute my microphone. Now, nobody else has joined my meeting as of yet, and they're not going to, at least they shouldn't. So let's go over just a couple of other quick things here uh, while we're inside of Zoom. So the first thing is, is as you can see, as soon as we join the meeting with the host video on, you can now see me. And uh, we can also go ahead and invite people to join the meeting if we wanted to. So from right here, we can click invite. I can say copy the invitation or copy the URL, and then I can email that out to people, or I can just go over here to email and click on any one of these if I wanted to use my default email, and it will automatically start a new email uh, with the invitation already in place. And then all I have to do is send it off to my participants. Okay, that's enough of me on the screen, so let's go ahead and stop the video right here. All right, and as you can see, when I stop my video, what it is replaced with uh, for everyone that is viewing on the other end is my profile image. So that's a really cool feature if you've already got that put in uh, inside of the back end of Zoom, then your profile image will show up so people will know who is talking. Okay, now let's go over how to share your screen. So what will end up happening is, is a lot of times, especially if you're a professor uh, or a teacher or you are doing a webinar, you're gonna be sharing a PowerPoint presentation or, uh, or maybe a Google presentation or uh, a keynote. And what you want to be able to do is, is share that out to your entire audience so they can follow along. And that is done through this sharing button right here. So we can go ahead and click share, and we can decide to either share the desktop, we can share a whiteboard, or we can share the screen of an iPhone or an iPad through AirPlay, or you can actually connect your iPhone or iPad with a cable, and then you can share whatever you're doing on your iPad as well. All right, so for this uh, tutorial, we're just gonna say share the desktop, and we'll go ahead and um, 
Oh, oh there's a couple other options down here. I can say share computer sound, which if you're going to be sharing any content that has audio on your computer, you'll want to make sure that is turned on. And then also you can say optimize for full screen video clip. So that way if you are showing a video clip, um, it'll auto automatically optimize for that as well. We'll go ahead and say share. And now you'll notice that, um, let's see here. Oh, I'm not able to share my audio from my computer at this time. So I'm just going to cancel out on that. Um, so it's not going to actually share the audio from my computer at this time. I, I would have to go into the back end of the meeting and uh, change some things, or actually the back end of my computer to change some things to allow the computer's audio to be able to be sent through Zoom. And we're not going to work on that right now. Um, as you can see, though, there's like this little green line that now runs around the screen. So I know that whatever I put in front of my screen is going to show up inside of Zoom. So let's go ahead and click Google Chrome. And I want to try something here. I'm going to go ahead and go full screen with, uh, with Chrome. Um, so as you'll see, the green bar has stayed around Chrome. And if I move off of that uh, screen, the green bar follows me to the next desktop. Now this is important because there's actually a couple of different ways that you can do screen sharing. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it for right now. And we know that we have Google Chrome running in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm going to say share and notice that a new little thumbnail has shown up and it says Google Chrome. If I click on this, and then say share again, we're automatically going to be sharing just the Google Chrome screen. And if I go over to uh, a different workspace, it's going to pause, automatically pause my screen sharing um, with all of the participants. So I can go ahead and say resume share. It's automatically going to take me right on back over um, over here to Google Chrome. Now, as the presenter, I can see this little bar at the top, which allows me to manage the meeting. Uh, the people on the other side of your Zoom meeting are not going to see this bar show up or anything you do in this bar while you are sharing your screen. All right, we're going to go ahead and stop screen sharing for right now. So this is kind of just a quick and dirty crash course on how to get started quickly inside of Zoom if you've never used it before, or maybe you have used it quite a bit and you're like, hey, I'd like to be able to jump in and just start a meeting really quickly without having to do a whole lot of settings. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's helpful for you all. Uh, if you're not already following along on this channel, make sure you take a moment to subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.